let x1 be Poisson lambda 1 and x2 be Poisson lambda 2 and assume that they are independent random variables find the probability mass function of their sum. So we are starting out here by assuming that x1 has the Poisson distribution and it has a parameter lambda 1 which might possibly be different than the parameter in x2 which is Poisson lambda 2. Now in this particular case the interest is in the random variable y which is a function g of x1 and x2 and in this particular case it will be x1 plus x2. Now unfortunately if you flip back to the previous page and look at the statement of the theorem it is asking for two functions a g1 and a g2 and two y's y1 and y2. This y2 is sometimes called a dummy transformation. You actually have to make up a uh, y2 here. So let's start out and call this one g1 which is what we really want and now we have to make up a y2 which is some function g2 of x1 and x2. Now we can make up anything we want here but the key is you want to make up something that first of all is one to one and second of all is easy. So one of the most popular things that is done here is to just let g2 be x2 alone. That's one thing that is done. Another thing that would make some sense in this case is to take x1 minus x2. But I did it this way and it worked out. So we will now start into the uh, six steps. Here they are. Step one is to determine the support of the x values, which is going to be script A. So in this case, x1 and x2 are Poisson random variables and you know that the support of the Poisson distribution goes from 0 up to infinity so you get this for the support of x1 and you get this for the support of x2. And that completes step 1. That moves you to step 2. Step 2 is find the probability mass function of x1 and x2. Well we know from chapter 4 that the distribution of x1 all by itself is Poisson so this will be lambda 1 to the x1 e to the minus lambda 1 divided by x1 factorial and that's for x1 equals 0 1 2 and we also know that f x2 of x2 will be lambda 2 to the x2 e to the minus lambda 2 divided by x2 factorial and that will have the same support as x1. Now we also know from the problem statement that these are independent random variables and because they are assumed to be independent we know that the joint distribution of x1 and x2 will be the product of the marginals. Well we have the two marginals right here so this joint distribution will be lambda 1 to the x1 e to the minus lambda 1 divided by x1 factorial multiplied by lambda 2 to the x2 e to the minus lambda 2 divided by x2 factorial. Whoops, getting ahead of the game here. I think we went ahead a long ways. Oh, a long, long, long ways. We'll get back to it here. Oh, we're going all the way through. 
order statistics. And I really messed this up. Get close. There we go. All right, we're back in the example here. One more. And this right here will be good for any x1, x2 pair that is an element of the support script A, which was given in step one. So that gets us through steps one and two in the process. And now we move on to step three. Step three is to determine whether the transformation, which you recall is y1, I'm just going to put them in lower case now, x1 plus x2, and then the dummy transformation was y2 equals x2 to determine if that is a one-to-one -one transformation. So here's how that is done. To determine whether this is a one-to-one -one transformation, you can plot all of the points in script A. So all of these dots here going all the way out to infinity in the first quadrant, that is script A. And I'm going to label these points using lowercase letters. So this will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X. And we got one left over. Okay. Now, each one of these points to determine if this is a one-to-one -one transformation. By the way, I understand that because this is a linear transformation, you can just say yes, but I'm trying to give you a more general view of things if it's not a linear transformation. This point A is the point zero, zero. Where does zero, zero in the X1, X2 um, space map to Y1 and Y2? And you'll say, well, that maps to zero, zero. So A maps to that. And how about B? B is the point 1, 0, and that also maps to 1, 0. And if you follow that pattern, this first line will map to the very same values. But that's not the case here. F is the point 0, 1. 0, 1 maps to the point 1, 1. So this is the point F. How about the point G, which is the point 1, 1? Well, the point 1, 1 maps to the point 2, 1. So that goes in this fashion. And that's what happens to this row. And then when you go to 2, 0, well, 2, 0 maps to, um, I'm sorry, not 2, 0. I should have said 0, 2. 0, 2 maps to the point 2, 2. So that's where K and then L and then M. And once you pick up the pattern, this isn't too bad. Here's P and Q. And here's you. So to answer the question, is this a one-to-one -one transformation? Every point here maps to a point over here, and the points over here also map back to the points here. So the answer is yes, this is a one-to-one -one transformation. Once you have established that this is a one-to-one -one transformation, then step four is to find the inverse functions, which is solve this set of equations for x1 and x2. Well, I'll start out by solving for x2. That's pretty easy. That's just going to be y2. And how do you solve this equation for x2? It is y1 minus, I'm sorry, solving for x1, it is y1 minus x2 but you know that x2 is just y2, so this becomes y1 minus y2. Step five is to find the set script B. Well, script B is right over here. All of those dots consist of script B. So in this case, it is the set of all y1, y2 values such that y1 goes from 0, 1, 2, etc. And y2 will go from 0, 
up to whatever the y1 value is. So this goes 0 up to whatever y1 is. And there is script B, which is this triangular shaped region. So that brings us to the all-important step 6. And step 6 is done on the next page. And here it is. In this case, for step 6, we want the joint probability mass function of y1 and y2 using the transformation technique. And in this particular case, that will be take the joint probability density function of x1 and x2, but instead of evaluating it at x1 and x2, evaluate it at the two inverse functions g1 inverse of y1 and y2 and g2 inverse of y1 and y2. And where are those inverses? We got those on the previous page. On the previous page the inverses were given right here. y1 minus y2 and y2. So to move forward in this case what we want to do is we want to write down the joint probability mass function of x1 and x2 but wherever we see an x1 we put in a y1 minus y2 and so that occurs once in the numerator and once in the denominator and then on the second term wherever we see an x2 we plug in a y2, which is the inverse there. So this will be lambda 2 to the y2, e to the minus lambda 2, divided by y2 factorial. Now we don't have the absolute value of the Jacobian as we do typically in the uh, continuous case. So we're done at this point, y1, y2, an element of script B. But what did the question ask for? Did it ask for the joint distribution of y1 and our dummy transformation? No, it asked for the probability mass function of y1 all by itself. And so to find that, that means we've got to find a marginal distribution. And so what you do is you integrate y2 out of the joint distribution of y1 and y2. So in this particular case, when you're integrating out y2, you know that y2 runs from 0 up to y1. Again, back to the previous page, if you look at that triangular region, which is right here, that's where you will be running the, uh, the limits. And that will be the summation of lambda 1 to the y1 minus y2 e to the minus lambda 1 divided by y1 minus y2 factorial times lambda 2 to the y2 e to the minus lambda 2 divided by y2 factorial. I am going to put in a dot 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 indicating there are more pleasant things than working this summation. In the end, you wind up with lambda 1 plus lambda 2 raised to the y1 power e to the minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 divided by y1 factorial. And this is for y1 equals 0, 1, 2, Dot. And you will recognize this right here as y1 having the Poisson distribution with parameter lambda 1 plus lambda 2. If you were to confirm this in Apple, you would say x1 is a Poisson random variable, x2 is a Poisson random variable, and y is their convolution.